So internationalization is uh, one area I particularly like in software development. And it's great to be here today uh, talking about it. So my name is Pascal. I'm 24. I'm a software engineer. I'm also a WordPress core committer and contributor to like lots of other stuff from WordPress. And I came all the way here from Switzerland to talk about WordPress, but I also learned about the uh, craft beer industry here in South Africa, so I have to try that as well. Uh, obviously, this talk has to do something with internationalization. Uh, over the years, uh, WordPress has steadily improved the way we deal with translations. And overall, it does a very good job, job at it, um, but there are always new uh, things around the corner and ways to improve existing stuff. And today we will look at, um, we'll have a look at improving internationalization workflows uh, in particular. And I tried to split this talk up in, in three areas. So first we're going to uh, look at the bare basics of how internationalization and localization in WordPress work. Uh, just so you get a better sense at how all these parts interact with each other. And second, we'll look into how we can internationalize our own WordPress plugin or theme. So it's like a simple example how this works. And like, what does it take to make a project available in other languages? And finally, we'll explore how we can reduce barriers and improve existing workflows when it comes to internationalization in WordPress projects. And this is especially uh, interesting for like private plugins or private projects, for example, premium plugins or premium themes, uh, etc. Before we start, uh, I want to quickly explain the terminology a little bit. Uh, like two terms you will hear more hear most often in this talk. First one is internationalization, super long word. Uh, so we usually we refer to it as I18N, where 18 is like the number of letters missing in the middle. Uh, so this is basically the process of making uh, your project translatable. Uh, so this way you, your software can work in other languages and not just English, like it can be Spanish or Chinese or German. But we don't say translation actually, uh, because it's not just about written words that we translate. It's also about things like symbols and units, date formats, uh, whether you drive on the left or right side of the road. So this process is called localization because like, you have to adapt to the local look and feel. Um, in other words, it's like translation, but it has like a cultural twist to it. And also, if you aren't that experienced uh, with these topics, I encourage you to check out slides in the previous talk of mine. Uh, it's called Internationalization Done Right. And it explains lo like lots of uh, common pitfalls and best practices when dealing with internationalization. All right, so with this settled, um, I want to explore a bit of WordPress's history in this area. WordPress has been internationalized uh, for many years now. Over 50% of uh, WordPress websites are non-English or non-American English. So this is really a big thing for the project. And if you want, to, your, work, um, if you want your, your software to be usable around the globe, it's important to take other languages into account. You just can't like leave it English and like that's it. Um, so internationalization was crucial for WordPress as a project, project and as a community because nowadays it's used all over the world in countries where English is not the main language. So as soon as WordPress added support for that, it was quickly translated uh, into German, Japanese and many more languages. I think the Japanese guys even translated like source code comments into Japanese, like crazy. One big accelerator for this global adoption uh, was the translation platform that was made available at translate.wordpress.org. Uh, this platform allows thousands of people to fully localize their projects. Uh, so it's not just for WordPress itself, but also all the plugins and themes available on wordpress.org and even the WordPress mobile apps. There's like thousands of people every day uh, translating projects there. Um, the site is built on, on an open source WordPress plugin called Glovepress. So Glovepress allows setting up multiple projects and translating them to almost 180 different locales. And a local is not just a language, but it's like also a language with uh, variants 
for example, in German we have like a formal German variant and the informal German, like lots of different stuff. So WordPress.org built quite a community around this translation platform. But the good thing is because it's built on this open source plugin, everyone can run their own uh, translation platform actually. If you know uh, the free PoEdit translation editor, uh, so GlossPress is basically like PoEdit, just in a browser and with multiple people. Plus it's open source and, and free and everything. Um, so uh, a direct benefit of this translation platform was the introduction of language packs. Um, language packs allow you uh, and WordPress.org to ship translations independently of the software. This means three things. First, you don't have to bundle the translations with your plugin, with your source code. And when you install a plugin, WordPress uh, automatically downloads the translations from WordPress.org. And as soon as new translations are available, it will automatically update these translations without you having to update the plugin. So if there's like a spelling mistake in the translation, you can just fix it on WordPress.org and you can update your website without touching the plugin. All right, uh, now let's have a look at how all these things from the translation platform, how they come together uh, for the benefit of WordPress plugin developers. Uh, we start by building a new plugin. And for this example, uh, assume that we want to publish this plugin on WordPress.org, just like Jetpack, Yoast SEO, um, and thousands of others. The most basic WordPress plugin consists of a single PHP file. And in this PHP file, we can use all the internationalization functionality WordPress provides to make our plugin translatable. And if we want to distribute a plugin on WordPress.org, uh, we also have to add a readme file that explains how the plugin works. Kind of makes sense. Um, so in the end, uh, the plugin's folder structure looks like this. Uh, we have our folder called my plugin, which contains the main plugin file called myplugin.php and a readme file. And the most simple plugin file will look like this. It has some metadata in it to denote the plugin name, description, the version, the author. And at the bottom, for the sake of this example, we have a single string that we want to translate. So this is just one of the many functions we can use to translate our plugin. Um, so the first part of this function call is the text we want to translate. And the second one is called uh, the text domain. So this is the plugin's text domain which is also called my plugin, and it's the same as the folder name from before. So this is an important detail. Uh, these two things have to match. Uh, another thing is that in our readme file, we define that our plugin requires at least WordPress 4.6. You don't have to worry about that much, but this is the version where we added some major improvements to how things work in WordPress and how language packs are loaded. Plus, I hope you're running for WordPress 4.9 anyway, like nothing older. So this shouldn't be a problem. Now we have our plugin and we can submit it to WordPress.org. Uh, our plugin was called My Plugin. So as soon as it gets approved and we upload it, it will be available under the same name uh, as our folder name and text domain. So in this case, it's like WordPress.org slash plugins slash my dash plugin. And when we've done this, uh, we build our plugin, we published it on WordPress.org. It means it's now also available for translation under this translation platform at translate.wordpress.org. So we didn't have to do anything for this. Everything is created automatically. And now users from all over the world can translate your plugin in their own language. And so now as soon as you install the plugin via the WordPress admin, panel, um, you can install a plugin and WordPress will automatically install the language um, for it, the translation. So there's really nothing else we have to do. Um, and you can easily verify this whole process by checking the WP content folder um, of your WordPress site. So when you install the plugin and WordPress install the translations files, uh, you will see two new files in that folder with your 
text domain or your plugin name and uh, local. So in this case, I installed the German translation and it's inside WP content slash languages. So there's only a few steps we really have to follow here. First, we develop a new plugin um, with the available um, get text function that WordPress provides. We submit it to WordPress.org, we translate it, install the plugin, boom, done. Things are a bit more complicated when you develop a private plugin or let's say a premium plugin that you don't want to publish anywhere or <coughs> at least not on WordPress.org. Uh, so maybe it's a, for a personal site, a client or, or something you want to sell. Uh, the first steps are obviously identical. We have to write a plugin. Uh, but after that, we're kind of left on our own for a bit. Uh, the most tricky part is called string extraction. This is the part where we need to find all the texts in our plugin that are actually translatable so that we can translate them later on. Uh, so for example, taking this uh, metadata from before, all the parts that are marked uh, bold here are actually translatable in WordPress. So that means we need to extract these strings so that we can use a translation platform like Plotpress or another software to translate them. Uh, there are lots of tools out there that help you with the string extraction. The oldest one is MakePot. Uh, there's like grunt tools. And as mentioned earlier, there's also PoEdit, with, which uh, is kind of uh, integrating very well with WordPress and WordPress plugin. So these are usually the tools you use to make this happen. And when you run the string extraction, you end up with a so-called POT file. And this POT file contains all the strings that we can now translate. It doesn't contain any translations. And since we're not using the WordPress.org translation platform, we'll have to save this file inside our plugin folder and not WP content. So since we have to use this pod file for the translation, we need to, uh, some tool then can read these files and help us translate all the strings. Um, again, this probably is going to be poetic again, but there are also tools, especially websites or, um, as I mentioned before, Glothpress, which you would have to install on your own server. So without going too much into too much detail, at the end we will end up uh, using the same languages files as before. Uh, they're just now in the plugin folder, plus we have this so-called POT file, which contains all the translatable strings. So when you want to add a new translation, you take this POT file, add the translations, and save them as PO and MO files. Now we just have to load these translations because they are not, these files aren't any good when we don't use them. So in our plugin, we can use a function called load plugin text domain, and it basically loads all the translations from our folder into memory, and whenever WordPress finds a string from our plugin, it can fetch the translation from this memory. So in summary, we have to do lots of manual steps uh, when developing a private plugin. Uh, not only do we have to do the string extraction ourselves, we also don't benefit from the WordPress.org translator community. Also, we have to manually load translations in our plugin, and we can't benefit from the more intelligent option that WordPress uses uh, for public plugins where it only loads translations when they're actually needed. So if you compare the two uh, options side by side, we can see that WordPress is able to do lots of things for us, like it takes um, over all the heavy lifting for, our, for us when we publish our plugin on WordPress.org. Um, for private plugins, the whole process is rather complicated. We have to handle the string extraction, translation parts, um, we don't have to worry about that on WordPress.org. And in contrary, it even gives us access to a large community of translators that can localize our plugin. And additionally, we benefit from the so-called uh, just-in-time translation loading I just mentioned before. So WordPress will only load the translations uh, when needed. And that doesn't happen for private plugins. At some point, uh, I or we at our company thought, that can't be it. That's not what we want for our plugins. Um, having so many manual steps, it's just not sustainable when you develop 
dozens of private plugins and themes for clients. And in order to solve this problem, we built a solution called Traditore, uh, which is Italian for translator. I don't know why we picked Italian, it just sounds good. Um, so essentially, Traditore is a WordPress.org for everyone. And it allows you, us to have the same benefits for private plugins as for public ones hosted uh, on WordPress.org. So to be a bit more precise, it's like translate.wordpress.org, uh, but for our own private projects. So th having this platform allows us and our client to translate all the plugins and themes using the same web interface as on WordPress.org. Uh, of course, it's built using Glotpress because it's a WordPress plugin and, and it's free and open source. And it's the same plugin that uh, powers translate.wordpress.org. What you see here is a super simple bare bones glot press install. Looks very ugly, I know. Uh, unfortunately, that's like the default styling on has. It doesn't look as pretty as WordPress.org, but it gets the job done. And all the traditory specific things I will talk about now, they aren't visible here because of all these things, they happen like under the hood. Um, so using glot press and our custom traditory plugin, we can easily translate our projects into any language we want. And since it's powered by WordPress, we can even create the user accounts. So uh, for example, client A can only see the translations for project A and so on. Um, with Traditore, we try to really make things similar as with WordPress.org. And we try to automate things as much as possible. And right now it works like this. So let's say you've built a plugin and the source code is hosted on GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket, just somewhere. And whenever you push changes to that repository, when you make a change to your plugin, uh, GitHub sends a notification to Traditore. And Traditore then does all the string extraction stuff and imports these strings into Glotpress. And after that, you can just go to the translation platform um, make all the translations and Traditore will automatically create these language packs that WordPress needs and uses. So all the, now all you need is um, install a specific plugin on your WordPress site or like configure your plugin to basically tell WordPress, hey, uh, for this particular plugin, don't look for translations on WordPress.org. We have our own platform here. And it means your site's translations for these plugins are always up to date, just like if it was an, a public plugin. And for the string extraction part, we had to come up with something new that is more reliable than what is being done on WordPress.org. Um, we found all the existing solutions to be very buggy. And plus, we couldn't use uh, PoEdit because PoEdit doesn't run on a server and doesn't work automatically. So that's why we decided to uh, build our own solution using WPCLI, which is the official common line interface for WordPress. So this WPCLI command makes it easier than ever to extract strings from WordPress projects. All you have to do is point it to a directory and optionally define the target file name and um, maybe some other options. And it figures out everything else. So this is the command we use under the hood in Traditore. And of course, since this command is not only useful for us, but for everyone else, um, we open sourced everything and it's available on GitHub. And it's actually like an officially bundled uh, command with WPCLI. So if you're using the latest version of WPCLI, you get all the benefits from this command. It just works. So after Traditore runs WPCLI and imports the strings into Glotpress, it can notify you on Slack about the changes it made. So this way you always know what the current status is and when language packs are built. And so the code I mentioned earlier to tell WordPress to look for the translations from your platform uh, is as simple as that. So we built a little helper script, helper script called Traditore registry. Uh, so to use it, you just specify your plugin slug, which is like my dash plugin again, 
and point it to the API of your translation platform. Um, we tried to do like a simple visual presentation for this. Um, so all our client websites now download translations from either WordPress.org or our own platform, depending on whether it's uh, something hosted on WordPress.org or developed in private. And Traditore allows us to collaborate on the translations and update them uh, without interrupting the development cycle of our plugins and themes. Compared uh, side by side, again, with this new approach, uh, Traditore essentially does what WordPress.org does. We never have to do all the manual stuff ever again. Uh, everything is as automated as possible. And if you want to learn more about this uh, workflow, I even wrote a yeah, quite a large uh, blog post about that that goes a bit into more detail. Um, I also like to point out that everything we built to make this happen is open source, uh, freely available on GitHub. Um, this way you can run your own translation platform powered by WordPress. Uh, here are even the links to the repositories. Um, feel free to check them out, ask questions, fork it. Maybe open issues, but please don't. I don't want to work. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, there's plenty of documentation available about how to set everything up. Um, there's also a new major release coming out soon with even more features. What I have shown you so far uh, is just the current state of the WordPress internalization universe and what we did to optimize the workflow. Um, there are still many things that we can and should change. So for one, uh, we obviously want to make Traditore better. Uh, the plugin isn't yet fully finished, but it already works for us very well. And the next step is to make it easier for you to use as well. Uh, whenever possible, we try to contribute back to the community. Um, so all the things we try to uh, give back in some way. So for example, we're currently working on bringing the WP CLI command to WordPress.org so that the translation platform uses the same tool that we built. Also, this wouldn't be a WordPress talk without any mention of Gutenberg, especially uh, now that it is going to be released soon. So Gutenberg is the new editor experience for WordPress, and I think the release plan for end of November. And one thing about this editor is that it's almost entirely written in JavaScript, which creates new challenges when it comes to internalization. Because what I've shown you before is just PHP code, but with JavaScript, like everything is a mess. And so work is currently being done to make sure all the texts in Gutenberg can be properly translated. Because right now you can't translate them on WordPress.org. Um, so there are going to be lots of changes in WordPress 5.0 that will affect anyone uh, doing internalization and localization work uh, for more modern WordPress projects using JavaScript. Whew. So, I know there was lots of information to process. Um, I hope you got a bit of an overview um, though of how things work under the hood with WordPress and WordPress.org. Um, I don't think we have any time for questions right now, but feel free to ask any questions later on. You can find me outside in the hallway or maybe downstairs where there's apparently beer, right? Yeah. Um, also, if you're coming to WordCamp Cape Town, I'm doing a workshop there about this topic where you can learn about this in a more like hands-on approach. So for now, I'm done with my presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs>